Hello there, welcome to my channel. Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain to you about chemistry, paper 2, 0620, and it's 21, October, November 2020. The duration for this paper is of 45 minutes. Okay, let us move to for the first question. Okay, the first question, which gas has the slowest rate of diffusion? Okay, you, you have to understand if the if a certain molecule having a heavier mass right the rate of diffusion here will be slower compared to the smaller molecules now we have to find from r mm okay relative molecular mass so hydrogen is one so let me just give you the ram of uh, hydrogen one oxygen is 16 nitrogen is 14 Okay, here the RMM, here will be 2. Nitrogen is 14 plus with 3 and you'll be getting here about 17. And here, and uh, I'm adding uh, carbon which is 12. So here's 12 plus with uh, 4, you're getting here 16. And here carbon is 12 and oxygen is 32. 16 multiplied with 2, you're getting here about 44. So you can see the heaviest gas over here is carbon dioxide. So it has the slowest rate of diffusion. Okay, so your answer here is donkey. Okay, now let us move to the second question. Okay, let me scroll higher. Okay, now your second question here. A mixture of colorless amino acids is separated using a chromatography. The solvent used is uh, propanol. The chromatogram is sprayed with a locating agent. Okay, this locating agent is used to separate the substance which is a colorless. Okay, to identify the substance. So that's the purpose of a locating agent. Okay, which row describe the purpose and the propanol and the locating agent? Okay, the propanol is to diffuse into the into the chromatography paper okay so now let us look by one by one okay now if you look at uh, propanol to make uh, individual individual amino acid visible not really it's not the function and a locating agent to prevent amino acid moving any further not really okay if you look at here to prevent amino acid moving up no the function of a propanol is to to move the amino acid up the chromatography paper okay so your answer will be either b or c now let us check out the uh, purpose of locating agent so is to make uh, the colorless amino acid visible that is the purpose of locating agent okay so answer here is boy Okay, let us go to the question number three. Okay, for the question number three, which piece of apparatus can only measure a single fixed volume? So, single fixed volume is, the best answer here is pipette. Okay, now number four, in the chromatography experiment shown, which label represent solvent front? So the solvent front is A, all right? Solvent front is this, this part. So your answer is A. Okay, now let us move to the next one. Okay, number five. The atomic structure of four particles are shown. Okay, we have a PQRS. Which particles have the same chemical properties? So if it's a chemical properties, it must be in a same group. Okay, it must be in a same group. Now let us look at the protons. All we have a 17. Electrons here we have 18 and 17. All right. Okay, when you look at this P and a Q, you can see that it is a 18 here. All right. It's a one charge higher than the proton. So definitely this one will be a, it's a negative. And Q is also an ion. 
okay because your electron is higher compared to the proton when you look at it here r and s both we having it is a atom okay proton and the electron is the same so they are atom and they are isotopes okay they are isotopes because they have a same proton number but differ in a neutron number so your best answer here is a r and also s so your best answer here will be donkey okay now let us move to six okay here the arrangement of electrons in two ions formed from element x and y now just look at this uh, proton here we have a 19 now we just have to calculate this electron electron here we have the first shell 2 second shell is 8 and 8 so your total electron here is 18 which means the proton number is higher by 1 so x is positive like y we have 17 and here arrangement for the y is 2.8.8 okay by looking at this and electron number for y is higher than the proton number by 1 so here will be negative charge and looking at it uh, y is from a group 17 which will form a dwee atom okay all the at all the elements from the group 17 will form a dwee atom like example fluorine chlorine bromine and also iodine all of this will form a dwee atom so here x and will be the room temperature condition for the y here will be a dwee atom and when they combine together you have a x y and when we balance this you'll be getting two here to balance this y and x here okay and you can actually separate this to make it like a 2x positive plus with a 2y negative charge okay so this is the explanation for this question and your answer here will be c okay now let us move to question number seven okay which diagram shows the outer shell electron arrangement in a molecule of methanol okay methanol we have to understand the concept so we will have a carbon oxygen hydrogen and with the carbon it is attached with a three hydrogen okay and then each of these bonding there will be two electrons only okay there will be two electrons and there is no double bonding over here okay now they are asking for the outer shell electron so which means the carbon will have a four valence electron oxygen will have a six valence electron and hydrogen let me use a different color okay this is hydrogen okay this one i'm drawing based on this levy structure okay so if you look at it this is the bonding that forms and you can see this is the hydrogen the green color i circle okay this is the hydrogen and let me circle with the blue color for carbon and uh, black color for oxygen okay so these are the bonding so we need to show the outer shell electron which is shown by the oxygen here so your best answer here will be a because c is wrong because you will having a double bond here 
so this is definitely strong and there is no atoms other atoms shown over here and here the issue is here is there is no there is no electrons shown by the oxygen okay so your best answer here will be a okay now let us move to the next one okay number eight so which statement about silicon dioxide is correct so silicon dioxide it cannot conduct electricity okay it cannot conduct so it's a simple covalent molecule not at all it is a macromolecule structure it is similar to graphite not at all it is a macromolecular with four oxygen atom bonded to each silicon at, uh, atom so which means the silicon is actually from a group 14 so we just put here uh, four plus oxygen we know is a group 16 which is a two negative when they combine they will be forming as uh, silicon 2 and oxygen is 4 it is simplified to be silicon and oxygen 2 all right so this is the true story of this so your best answer here will be boy okay now let us look at the question number 9 over here okay question number 9 rubidium is in a group 1 of the periodic table bromine is in a group 17 rubidium reacts with bromine to form ionic compound so uh, they are asking here which row shows the electron change taking place for rubidium and correct formula for the rubidium ion okay you have to understand one thing uh, the metals will be with the following the, this formula we will donate electrons okay in this way so rubidium having the same uh, characteristics where it will donate it, uh, one electron okay one electron so it should be electron loss should be electron loss and it is a positive okay it's a positive so and say c over here okay now let us look at question number 10 okay which statement explain why graphite is used as a lubricant all bonds between the atoms are weak uh, not really okay conduct electricity if it does conduct electricity there is no use of uh, becoming a lubricant but yes it, it does conduct electricity so but this is not the answer so it has a it has a low melting point graphite it has uh, one of the highest melting point okay so this is also wrong so layers in the structure can slide over each and other so this is your the the real answer for this because like in a pencil lid okay so in a pencil lid it is slippery because it has uh, this layer layers in the structure can slide over each another so your best example here you can write it as a pencil just imagine as a, as a pencil okay now number 11 a sodium carbonate reacts with a sulfuric acid to form carbon dioxide water and sodium salt an incomplete equation for the reaction is shown below so what's the formula of the sodium salt so we have an equation like metal carbonate okay metal carbonate plus with acid it will form the salt carbon dioxide plus with water so this metal will be combined with the acid so you'll be given sodium sulfate so sodium is positive one and sulfate is a two negative so when they combine you will form you will form na2so4 so your best answer here will be c the most accurate one okay so now, now let us go to question number 12 the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 when you 
when calculating relative atomic mass which particle is the mass of chlorine atom compared to okay in the definition of this relative atomic mass all right like a r a m have you seen the formula of a mass of element it can be any element x is divided by 1 over 12 multiply mass of carbon okay mass of carbon so this is the true definition of a of a relative atomic mass it is compared to carbon one atom of carbon because the weight of one atom carbon is 12 so when i substitute here 12 1 over 12 divided by 12 i mean multiply with 12 you'll be getting 1 so here is the mass of the element itself so 12 is c okay now number 13 okay what is the empirical formula of an oxide iron formed by reacting 2.2 gram of iron with a 0 0.96 of oxygen so here let me explain to you the calculation part okay 2.2 gram this is iron and here will be the oxygen so here 0 0.9 6 okay now we divide with this r a m 56 and here is about 16 we get the mole calculation for this and here will be 0 0.04 and here will be 0 0.06 now we will be taking the lowest mole okay and divide with its uh, with both of them and here we will be getting here We will be getting here 1 and 1.5. So, since we cannot use 1.5 to show in the structure, we will multiply with 2. So, here we got 2 and 3. So, you become iron 2 and oxygen 3. Okay. So, your answer here will be C. This is the calculation of an empirical formula. Okay. So, the next one here will be number 14. But let me erase this part okay so for number 14 which reaction takes place at cathode during electrolysis of molten nickel so we have two ions here nickel 2 positive and chloride negative so here will be the anode here will be the cathode positive negative Okay, so we will have a nickel, two positive, and chlorine. So let me do just do both. Okay, so here will be going here. This is anode, and we will have it will release electron and form an atom chlorine. But uh, chlorine will become dwi atom, just how I explained just now in the earlier question. And this is anode and uh, the electron will be transferring to the cathode okay to the cathode so what happens over here the nickel will be absorbing electrons and it will form atom here and it will make the cathode become fatter okay so the 14 will be donkey all right so this is the explanation for this question Okay, now for 15, sodium nitrate is added to water in a beaker, stirred until it dissolves. At the end of the experiment, the beaker feels cold. So what happened here actually is, so when there is a reaction happening, okay, when there is a reaction happening here, uh, it absorbs the heat. Once it absorbs the heat, so what happened? the it will absorb the heat from the surrounding so that's why the beaker feels cold so it is an example of an endothermic reaction okay and then the temperature of the solution will will reduce okay so this is your best answer here 15 is a 
Okay, now we look at 16. Which substance does not require oxygen in order to produce energy? So, for combustion purpose, yes, we do need oxygen. Yes, we do need oxygen. Natural gas, yes, obviously. And for radiate, radioactive, alright, for radioactive, they do not need any help. So, they will radiate themselves and emit the radiation, alpha, gamma, and also beta. Okay, so uranium. So, your answer is donkey here for 16. Okay, now look at number 17. Okay, number 17 here. The ethane reacts with hydrogen to form ethene. Okay, so now over here. Okay, so for number 17 here, okay, the bond energy are shown in the table. Okay, so here in this, uh, the first part here, they need to break the bondings. Okay, so we just calculate this. CH, we have uh, how many sets? We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we just, you take a 410, multiply it 4. And we have a double bond of carbon, so which is 614. And we have a hydrogen, which is 436. However, over here, there will be a forming, okay, the formation of the bonds. So CH, we have about 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So here will be 410 multiplied with the 6. Okay, carbon and carbon, we have uh, 350. Okay, now we calculate all this. So here we will be getting, so here the total energy that is being uh, absorbed is uh, 2690. And here will be the total energy being released will be 2810 so this one is the uh, releasing the heat this is exo and this is endo because you need to absorb the heat while you are breaking the bonds so when we minus this we are getting here negative 120 okay so your answer for number 17 here is boy Okay, now we go to number 18. Okay, for 18, a sign displayed in a floor mill is shown. Okay, we have an explosion hazard, no smoking, and no open flames. Which statement explains why there is a danger in explosion in a floor mill? So, it burns very quickly because it is a fine powder. Yeah, it's a possible answer. Catalyst for combustion? No. Gets hot and speed up the rate of combustion. Now, combustion of flour, uh, flour is uh, exothermic, not really. So, your best answer here will be A. Okay, now let us move to the question number 19. Okay, for question number 19, a student investigate the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid he follows the method shown 1 gram of calcium carbonate in a conical flask add excess hydrochloric acid let the reaction continue until no more gas is made repeat the experiment using a different concentration of hydrochloric acid so, which essential step has been left out of the method if it is to work out of reaction, rate of reaction? So, here will be, so he missed out the timing because when we are drawing the graph here, okay, for 1 gram you will have a limited carbon dioxide gas released, okay. 
So here's maybe it's a 0 0.1 molarity of this acid. So when he use the second one, which is much more concentrated, the timing will get shorter. Okay. So let's say here is about 0 0.5 he's using. And let's say he's using like a 2 molarity. So the timing will get shorter. So we need to calculate the timing for each of this. So the timing of the reaction he missed. Okay. All right. So let us move to question number 20. Okay. For question number 20, the reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen is shown below. The reaction is exothermic. So which of the change shifts the position of equilibrium to the right? Okay, which will produce like more yield okay so increase the concentration of oxygen yes definitely uh, so if we, if it is exothermic the only thing you have to remember is because exothermic means it is releasing heat okay so we should not increase the temperature when you increase the temperature what happens is it will reduce the yield so your best answer here will be is without the number 3. So A and C is not the answer. Your answer will be either B or D. So increase the pressure. Yes, indeed. So it's 1 and a 2. So boy is your answer. Okay, now we go for question number 21. Okay, here. The reaction between chlorine and bromine, bromine ion in is a, re a redox reaction. What is the change of what is the change in oxidation state of a reducing agent? A reducing agent itself will be oxidized. So let us list down all this oxidation number here. Zero for the atoms, negative one, and here will be negative one. If you look at the chlorine here. It is being reduced okay it is being reduced so this is the reducing agent so reducing agent has a state of negative 1 to 0 so your answer here will be boy okay now look at the number 22 Okay, 22. What is the characteristics of acid? So, it has a high pH value. No. It reacts with uh, ammonium salt to give ammonia uh, gas. No. Okay, change metal, turns metal orange into yellow. No. So, the best answer here will be carbonates to produce salt. Yes, donkey. Okay, number 23. Zinc oxide is an amphotric oxide. So, our amphotric oxide means it will react in either in acid and with base, alkali. Okay, so the another example for amphotric acid, amphotric oxide is, a, is an aluminium oxide. So, reaction with alkali and also acid, both must be yes. So, your answer is A over here. Okay, now we move to question number 24. So, question number 24. A student carry out an experiment to prepare pure magnesium sulfate crystal. The diagram shows the first stage of preparation. Magnesium carbonate and also acid sulfate. So, he added magnesium, sulf mag magnesium carbonate until no more reacts. Which process should he use for the next stage? Here will be he adds magnesium carbonate until no more reacts. So it means that this one will be in as excess. So we have to filter this one first. Okay, so, so filtration process will take place the next stage. Okay, now look at K25. Element P and Q have the same number of electron shells. It means they are in a 
same period. So Q has more electrons in its outer shell than P. So when Q has more electrons, it means the proton number for Q is higher. So in the periodic table here, the P will be in the range of the P will be here and Q will be in this range. Okay, so they are not in the same group. So P and Q, which statement are correct? P and Q are in the same group. No, so one is wrong. So it's not A, it's not B. Okay, now let us look at number two. Number two, yes, same period. So the P has a higher tendency to form positive ion than Q. So which is correct. So metals will form a positive ion, this will form a negative ions. Oxide of Q is much more basic than those in Q. Oxides from a group 1 and 2 will form ox um, base oxides. Okay, base oxides. However, the oxides from this uh, Q will form an acidic oxides. So your best answer here will be 2 and 3, which is the C. Okay, this is the answer for number 25. Now let us look at 26. So 26, the portion of the four elements in the periodic table are shown. Which element is a gas that displays iodine? From sodium iodide. So if you notice in the group 17, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and also iodine, this one is much more, more reactive compared to all this. So the basic concept of a displacement is when you have an AO plus with B, if the B is much more reactive compared to A, it will displace as a B, B O and A will be left out. So the same thing will happen here. Iodine in group 17 here will be, here will be fluorine, chlorine, bromine and also iodine. So definitely it should be C. Chlorine is much more reactive compared to iodine. So 26 is C. Okay, now let us move on. Okay, 27, a flammable gas needs to be removed from a tank at an industrial plant for safety reason an inert gas is used which is which gas is suitable inert gas is is argon this is the the easiest question is a group 18 okay so group 18 okay, this is your 27 the rest is more flammable okay now let us look at question number 28 Okay, so here a strip of aluminium is placed into a test tube containing aqueous lead to nitrate and left for several minutes. Aluminium is higher than lead in a reactive series. Okay, explain why lead is not displayed by this strip of aluminium. Okay, even though the aluminium is a uh, one of the high, higher reactive metals. But the thing is, the aluminium metal will form an oxide of itself at the surrounding. This is the characteristics. That's why aluminium is not reactive. So this oxide layer will protect the aluminium from being oxidized further. So it is unreactive. So your answer here should be donkey. There is an unreactive oxide layer of the aluminium. Okay, so number 28 is donkey. Okay, now we move to 29. Okay, for 29, which statement about metal zinc are correct? So it is extracted from 
or bauxite. So this bauxite is uh, for aluminium. Used so one is strong. So B is strong, C is strong. So your answer is either A or B. So two and three is correct. And the next one, it reacts with dilute zinc acid to produce hydrogen gas. Yes, when you have a metal plus with acid, you'll be having salt plus with a hydrogen gas. Okay, so yes, it's correct. So your answer here will be donkey. Okay, the next one, number 30. What's the symbol of the metal used in the manufacture of aircraft? because its strength and its low density so the aircraft is actually made by the element duralium where the main component here it will be aluminium because it is uh, strong and also it is a uh, less weight so your a so 30 is a okay now we move on with 30 okay 31 ammonia is manufactured using a haber process which statement about this process is correct the catalyst used for this reaction is vanadium uh, pentoxide. No, for iron, the catalyst is, for Haber process, the catalyst is iron. So, A is wrong. B, the hydrogen used is extracted from air. So, it is wrong. It is extracted from an alkane process. Okay. So, it's wrong. So, uh, remember, Haber process is a... Uh, it's a highly exothermic so using a high temperature it will it will reduce the yield of ammonia so this one cannot so the best answer here will be c okay now let us look at uh, number 32 the iron can be protected from rusting by attaching a piece of um, more reactive metal this is called as a sacrifice metal okay uh, magnesium to ion okay uh, which equation represents the reaction takes place okay instead of iron being oxidized magnesium will be oxidized okay magnesium will be oxidized it will form magnesium iron and Okay, magnesium will be oxidized and the iron will remain as an iron. So, the best answer here will be C. Okay, for number 33, which row describes two use of uh, sulfur dioxide? Okay, sulfur dioxide is uh, acidic by nature. So, neutralizing acid acid with acid no so neutralizing acid obviously no so a and c is not the answer okay extracting iron from hematite no we use carbon to extract so we don't use a sulfur dioxide so your best answer here will be boy bleaching because they have the acidic properties of a sulfur dioxide Preserve food and drinks? Yes. Okay, your best answer here will be boy. Okay, 34. Part of a carbon cycle is shown. Okay, what are the processes PQR? So, we will have uh, okay, carbon dioxide used by plants by the process called as photosynthesis. So, we have only one answer here, photosynthesis. Okay, glucose to carbon dioxide. It is by respiration process. Okay, we will oxidize the glucose plus with oxygen and then we will form a carbon dioxide plus with water. This is respiration. And the R here will be under decomposition. Okay, your answer is boy here. Okay, we move on. Number 35, the structure of four organic molecules are shown all right so let me scroll down a little bit okay so here we have uh, four options okay which molecule are structural isomer 
of structure 1. So here structure 1 we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have carbon 5. 5 carbon. And everything else is 5 carbons. Okay. Okay, the answer here will be, if you look at 1 and 2, it's the same. Okay, it's the same structure basically. So when we calculate here, the longest chain of the carbon here, we have 4. And 1 is attached here. So same goes to be this. Okay, same goes. So 1 and 2 is the, is, is, is the same. So 2 is not your answer. So A and B is not. So your answer here will be C you got 5, carbon got 5 and here we have 5 carbon so definitely it's 3 and 4. So your answer is C here. Okay now let us look at the next question. Okay which chemical equation for the substitution of an alkane with the chlorine is correct. Okay substitution process now example we have a methane here. Okay, now we will react with the chlorine. Okay, so now this chlorine will go and substitute this hydrogen while this hydrogen will be will be combined with this. Okay, so you'll be having a product of you have a hydrogen chlorine and you have a additional product which is a hydrogen chloride so the best answer here will be this is alkane so you have to follow the formula hn cn h2n plus with 2 so this is definitely strong so your answer will be either a or c And since the A, we have an additional of this. Yes, this is your answer. Okay, now we move to the next question. Okay, number 37. Propane is an alkene that react with bromine, steam and also hydrogen. Okay, so here when they add with hydrogen, it will break the bonding, okay, and form a alkene. So here we'll be having a, a propane. So your A and uh, D is wrong. So your answer will be either B or C. When it act with uh, react with steam, H2O, it means you have a OH and hydrogen. It will transform itself to become an alcohol. Okay, so it will be uh, alcohol, so which is C, your answer. Okay, K will be an alcohol. Bromine, bromine 2. So it will be dibromine propane. So your answer for 37 is C here. Okay, let us go to number 38. Okay, when you look at it here, this part, uh, the flow chart shows the preparation of ethanol and some important chemistry of ethanol. So here in this process, ethanol and process Y, it releases carbon dioxide. So ethanol releasing carbon dioxide is only by combustion. So few, when they combust, under combustion, you have carbon dioxide plus with water. Okay, plus with water. So here we have a combustion and steam, which is the water. So substance X under fermentation here will be glucose. So your best answer here will be boy. Okay, now let us go to the question number 39. Which statement about aqueous ethanoic acid are correct? It is an alkane. Nope, it is not, it is acid, it reacts with sodium carbonate to form carbon dioxide, yes of course, it changes from blue to red, 
yes because it is acid it is a hydrocarbon no so your answer is 2 and 3 which is c okay now let us go to the last question okay 40 the structure of polymer is shown okay which monomer forms this polymer so polymer will be coming from an alkene group so here we can see there is a 1 2 and 3 so it should be from propene okay from propene so your basic structure here will be uh, carbon double bond with hydrogen so this is your basic structure so once they break out this double bond and they will form additional car additional bond over here to merge around okay so this is the basic structure so your answer here should be donkey okay guys so that's all my contribution to help your revision so thank you so much for watching this video and please like this video and subscribe the channel thank you very much guys all the best for your revision